All right, ladies and gents, welcome to week five. Uh, week five is when I start handing out assignments and tests, and it's when people should pay attention because it's kind of important. Um, at least I think it is. Now, I've put up two written announcements on the board. Um, before I erase them later, if you want to have it in writing, go take a picture. Um, because my camera's not picking it up very clearly, so I won't guarantee that it's going to be all that visible on um, the recording. I'm going to get this stuff out of the way first so that if I run out of time, I don't need to give extensions because I didn't cover the handing out of the work. Now, I'm going to start out with the assignment because the assignment's the one that a lot of people complain about. This course, if you remember, look at the syllabus, has two assignments. I'm required to make at least one of those two a group assignment. Okay? Now, I am allowing groups of no more than three. No more than three. Uh, I've had in the past where people say, oh, I've got a group, there's like five of us. Okay, how much each of you guys got to actually work on this? And actually, I used to actually have my assignments set up differently, where it was actually theoretically go to four. And I've now dropped that component of it because it's getting pretty pointless. It's no more than groups of three. Now, on Blackboard under assignments, currently you can see a section called assignment instructions. Um, what you can't see, or actually, I'll scroll down a little bit. If I can get my mouse to play nice, wherever the heck it disappeared to. Okay, right below it, there's something that's called groups. I don't know if any of the other profs have touched the groups thing yet. Uh, if not, when you click on it, there's an option to create a group. It looks different for you guys, but it's a big fat create button. Now, that's your self enroll button. I used to try to create groups for people, and that went as well over as well as a bowling ball in the sky. It didn't work. Either I hit people that didn't like each other, or I ended up putting three slackers together, or I put three overachievers together, and none of the all three were bored. So I've given up on that, and I'm going to let you guys form your own groups of no more than three. Now, if you want to do groups of two, that's okay. If you can't find a group and you think you can take the assignment on your own, you're working as a group of one. I'm basically giving you guys three days to find groups because you've only got two weeks to do this assignment. And if you form groups three days before it's due, yeah, no. Because you can't do part two without doing part one first. So it kind of builds up. And it's up to you to divide the work. It's up to you to manage yourselves. I am not going to babysit you when it comes to group work. It's a fact of life when you go out in the real world and you're thrown into a work group for whatever reason you've been tortured. That it, they're usually you pick someone that's going to manage the group and everybody else works like good little soldiers. In this case, there's three of you and there's three basically three tasks. Therefore, you know, Try to self-manage. It's due at June 20th, end of day, 11.59 p.m. That's what Blackboard marks end of day. So the 11.59. It will stay alive for one week after that, but if you submit even five minutes after this, 10% off the top. In the real world, when you work and you do a client contract and it's due on a certain date and you run late, there's usually penalty clauses. I'm treating it the same way, but this time it's your grades. So at least it's not coming out of your pocket, technically, but it is. Okay, so that took care of the groups. It's available as of 6 p.m. Now, what you don't see, as I was saying earlier, is you'll see down here, assignment one is repeated. You cannot see the actual assignment section until you're part of a group, which is why I'm saying, form your groups in the next three days. Otherwise, put yourself in a group with yourself. At least so, you can see, so that you can see it. Um, this is where you'd submit. The one at the top, 
is just the exact, it's an exact copy of the assignment, just you can see it all the time. Okay, essentially, and I'll pull down the PDF, there's a little story, and you read the little story, and then there's some explanations and some sample documents. Um, this assignment is very similar to other assignments of this nature. Um, essentially, you're going to read this. You're going to create three diagrams, all properly normal. Well, one's a conceptual, one's a logical, and one's a physical. The reason why you can do this as a group is you can be each other's sanity checks. That's where the group work comes into this. One of you guys might do the conceptual, and then you, the other two look at it and go, what's wrong with you? And then you convert it to a logical and it's broken. Therefore, maybe somebody else in the group will see what's wrong. You're going to collaborate on achieving the goal. If you end up working in a group by yourself, you're not getting, you're going to, you can't say, well, I did the conceptual. You know, I did one third of the work. Therefore, it's one third of a group of three. That's not how it works. Um, I'm not punishing the people that want to work on their own because some people can work on their own just fine. But, you know, sometimes having a second set of eyes doesn't hurt. Okay, that's the assignment. So read it, scan it, try to understand what's asked. Three diagrams being submitted. You've got two weeks to do it. All right. On to test number one. Because it's that time of year where, you know, the crap gets piled on. Test number one, you have a week to do it. I don't do in-class tests. They're not realistic. The only in-class test that you guys ever have with me is your final exam because I'm mandated to give it to you that way. This test is take it home. It's done on Blackboard. It's open book because obviously I'm not going to sit with you in your bedrooms while you do the test. That's kind of dumb. It covers basically the textbooks and the hybrid. The textbook and the hybrids. This my test, here's how it works. My tests cover all the theory. My assignments cover all the practical. So it's, I'm testing both sides of the equation. So maybe you kind of suck at this stuff, but you're really good at this stuff. So maybe you suck at this stuff because you can't remember, you know, you don't know where anything is, but you're good at this. It's on Blackboard, found under tests. You get one try. This is not like the hybrids. You get one go. Now, if it's a case of which happens occasionally with Blackboard where you start the test and it dies right away, it's been known to happen occasionally, fire me off a note and I'll reset it. And I can tell if you hit the button it sub submitted it right away because you went and double click that spot on the screen because it shows me how long you had it open for. So if it was open and closed within two seconds, that's Blackboard. If it was opened, you answered three quarters of the questions and you say, I don't like the way this is going, not my problem, unless you can't get into it. But then you have to prove to me you can't get into it. It's available as of 8 p.m. tonight, because I don't want you guys clicking through the tests while I'm lecturing. Just putting that out there. It's due June 13th, end of day. So that means next Tuesday. So technically, you actually get more than seven days. You get seven days and three and two uh, and four hours. So that's more than adequate to do it. Um, it's multiple guess, true, false. Uh, if I remember, I even took out the uh, fill in the blanks. And I'm not. Don't quote me on that one though. I haven't looked at it in a little bit. I just made sure it worked, and then I walked away from it. Okay, so that's that. Now the other sign, the end, the other last announcement is, if those of you that have actually looked at the CSI, will see next week there is no lecture. I'm using this as a work period for the assignment. Ditto for the labs. Next week is work week. So in the summer, you don't get reading week to do the big assignments. I'm giving you guys a reading week for my class. Therefore, if you're having a hard time with the assignment, come to class. There won't be a lecture. There won't be a recording. But I will be here. Basically, you're going to put your name up on the board, and I'll go through them in the order the names go up on the board. 
Obviously, I'm going to ask people to keep a certain amount of distance away from wherever I'm sitting so people don't listen in on other people's uh, specific questions to their assignments. But that's what next week's for. All right. That covers today's announcements. That's what I wanted to make sure was not lost at the end of the class if lecture goes long. Yes. No, you can save and close. But you only get to submit once. Uh, okay, let's back up. I am not forcing completion. There's a checkbox that says force completion, which means once you've opened it, and if it detects that you've disconnected for whatever reason, force completion submits a test for you. That kind of sucks. Um, it's single attempt. Uh, so you can save and continue. That pretty much covers all the angles on the test. Um, if I remember right, seven days and four hours. No, no, that's uh, I didn't put a limit on it. No, I didn't put a limit on it. There are 50 questions. I couldn't remember how many questions there were. Well, that's why you got a week to do it. Like, seriously. People go, woo, it's a lot of questions. Well, some of those hybrids were, what, 20 questions long? Yes, that's what not force complete means. So you have all week to do it. Take your time. Do it right. Yes. Once you finish, and well, what happens is I'm not some giving the answers right away, uh, because what happens is there's the odd case where somebody, if somebody takes the test late, you can still take the test late, but you lose 10 percent. So you could have 100 percent. The best you're going to get is 90. But usually the ones that take the test late don't get 100 percent. That means that you know they're going to take a hit, because what would happen is if I showed you the answers right away, let's say you do the test right now. You start at 8, you're finished at midnight. You see your answers, then everybody can go ask you, can I see your test for a minute? <laughs> I've, learned, I've learned that the hard way. Okay, Over a couple of years ago, I learned that one the hard way. When somebody was doing the test during the class, and everybody was going, oh. I'm like, crap. So um, once the either the drop dead date, once either everybody has done the test, or the drop dead date has been reached, and as in the test is no longer visible to you guys, I will then allow you to see the answers and turn the test back on so you can see it. So basically, basically you'll be able to see the answers two weeks from today. Hey? Eh? Well, yeah, you're going to know how much you got. You'll know your, your score. Uh, but you will not know which questions you got wrong until later. Well, it's just like when you write a final exam, right? You know you got your score on the exam, but you don't know what you got wrong. Same thing, tests, midterm. I don't have firm, formalized midterms. That's why I have, you know, a test and an assignment at the same time because I'm covering, I'm testing both sides of the equation. Um, I'm a big believer in testing both the theory and the practical. Okay. Any other questions before I uh, start the actual official lecture? I'll take that as a no.